Part One, Chapter Two of Concerning the Spiritual in Art by Vasily Kandinsky, translated by Michael T. H. Sadler. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Expatriate in Bangor, Maine. Chapter Two: The Movement of the Triangle. The life of the spirit may be fairly represented in diagram as a large acute angled triangle divided horizontally into unequal parts with the narrowest segment uppermost the lower the segment the greater it is in breadth depth and area the whole triangle is moving slowly almost invisibly forwards and upwards where the apex was today the second segment is tomorrow what today can be understood only by the apex and to the rest of the triangle is an incomprehensible gibberish forms tomorrow the true thought and feeling of the second segment at the apex of the top segment stands often one man and only one his joyful vision cloaks a vast sorrow even those who are nearest to him in sympathy do not understand him angrily they abuse him as charlatan or madman so in his lifetime stood beethoven solitary and insulted how many years will it be before a greater segment of the triangle reaches a spot where he once stood alone despite memorials and statues are they really many who have risen to his level in every segment of the triangle are artists each one of them who can see beyond the limits of his segment is a prophet to those about him and helps the advance of the obstinate whole but those who are blind or those who retard the movement of the triangle for baser reasons are fully understood by their fellows and acclaimed for their genius the greater the segment which is the same as saying the lower it lies in the triangle so the greater the number who understand the words of the artist every segment hungers consciously or much more often unconsciously for their corresponding spiritual food this food is offered by the artists and for this food the segment immediately below will tomorrow be stretching out eager hands this simile of the triangle cannot be said to express every aspect of the spiritual life for instance there is never an absolute shadow side to the picture never a piece of unrelieved gloom even too often it happens that one level of spiritual food suffices for the nourishment of those who are already in a higher segment but for them this food is poison in small quantities it depresses their souls gradually into a lower segment in large quantities it hurls them suddenly into the depths ever lower and lower sinkovitz in one of his novels compares the spiritual life to swimming for the man who does not strive tirelessly who does not fight continually against sinking will mentally and morally go under in this strait a man's talent again in the biblical sense becomes a curse and not only the talent of the artist but also of those who eat this poisoned food the artist uses his strength to flatter his lower needs in an ostensibly artistic form he presents what is impure draws the weaker elements to him mixes them with evil betrays men and helps them to betray themselves while they convince themselves and others that they are spiritually thirsty and that from this pure spring they may quench their thirst such art does not help the forward movement but hinders it dragging back those who are striving to press onward and spreading pestilence abroad such periods during which art has no noble champion during which the true spiritual food is wanting are periods of retrogression in the spiritual world ceaselessly souls fall from the higher to the lower segments of the triangle and the whole seems motionless or even to move down and backwards men attribute to these blind and dumb periods a special value for they judge them by outward results thinking only of material well-being they hail some technical advance which can help nothing but the body as a great achievement real spiritual gains are at best undervalued at worst entirely ignored the solitary visionaries are despised or regarded as abnormal and eccentric those who are not wrapped in lethargy and who feel vague longings for spiritual life and knowledge and progress cry in harsh chorus without any to comfort them the night of the spirit falls more and more darkly deeper becomes the misery of these blind and terrified guides and their followers tormented and unnerved by fear and doubt prefer to this gradual darkening the final sudden leap into the blackness 
At such a time art ministers to lower needs and is used for material ends. She seeks her substance in hard realities because she knows of nothing nobler. Objects, the reproduction of which is considered her sole aim, remain monotonously the same. The question what disappears from art, only the question how remains. By what method are these material objects to be reproduced? The word becomes a creed. Art has lost her soul. In the search for method, the artist goes still further. Art becomes so specialized as to be comprehensible only to artists and they complain bitterly of public indifference to their work. For since the artist in such times has no need to say much, but only to be notorious for some small originality and consequently lauded by a small group of patrons and connoisseurs, which incidentally is also a very profitable business for him, there arise a crowd of gifted and skillful painters, so easy does the conquest of art appear. In each artistic circle are thousands of such artists, of whom the majority seek only for some new technical manner, and who produce millions of works of art without enthusiasm, with cold hearts and souls asleep. Competition arises. The wild battle for success becomes more and more material. Small groups who have fought their way to the top of the chaotic world of art and picture-making entrench themselves in the territory they have won. The public, left far behind, looks on bewildered, loses interest and turns away. But despite all this confusion, this chaos, this wild hunt for notoriety, the spiritual triangle slowly but surely, with irresistible strength, moves onwards and upwards. The invisible Moses descends from the mountain and sees the dance round the golden calf, but he brings with him fresh stores of wisdom to man. First by the artist is heard his voice, the voice that is inaudible to the crowd, Almost unknowingly, the artist follows the call. Already in that very question, how, lies a hidden seed of renaissance. For when this how remains without any fruitful answer, there is always a possibility that the same something, which we call personality today, may be able to see in the objects about it not only what is purely material, but also something less solid, something less bodily than was seen in the period of realism, when the universal aim was to reproduce anything as it really is and without fantastic imagination. If the emotional power of the artist can overwhelm the how and can give free scope to his finer feelings, then art is on the crest of the road by which she will not fail later on to find the what she has lost, the what which will show the way to the spiritual food of the newly awakened spiritual life. This what will no longer be the material objective what of the former period, but the internal truth of art, the soul without which the body, that is, the how, can never be healthy, whether in an individual or in a whole people. This what is the internal truth which only art can divine, which only art can express by those means of expression which are hers alone. End of chapter 2 Recording by Expatriate in Bangor, Maine.